This is me and my friend Olin. We like to play in the playground. I pushed him down the slide. He's gone. I didn't mean to kill Olin. I didn't mean to kill him. I hate myself. We can't find the child. There's absolutely no trace of them. There's no body that has been found or even a sign of a struggle. There is no blood or other biological evidence signifying an injury. He just vanished. We thought to check the nearby river for a body and found nothing. We checked for evidence of an abduction, but there was no adult that came near them except for their parents. SCP-1562 is a metal playground slide that is 2 meters tall and 3.4 meters long acquired from the outskirts of after several children mysteriously disappeared. The slide's effects only manifest when the victim slides head first on their stomach with their arms at their sides. Any other orientation results in no effect and it only works on humans. The person will disappear instantly and completely at approximately 15 centimeters from the edge of the slide. They have reported being transported to a cavern, unable to move their bodies. Those men who fell in that cave were trapped in what may as well be in their coffin. Stone does not have the same amount of give or looseness as our surroundings. They were put into a skin-tight trap. They couldn't move their limbs or their head without being stabbed by the unforgiving earth they couldn't breathe without being pushed back by the earth. The only logical thing to do is to investigate their surroundings, but they couldn't prepare themselves for what they found. Two D-class subjects, who otherwise are in death row, were selected to go into the slide. D-2445 would enter the slide first with only a radio earpiece. D-2445 reported his surroundings, what little he could see. I'm still headfirst on my stomach and my body's at an angle, but I'm in some sort of small tunnel and I'm stuck. I'm completely surrounded by rock or dirt on all sides. I don't have enough room to raise my head or move my arms and I can't move forward. I really want to get out of here now. But as you know, so far, no one who has disappeared using SCP-1562 has ever been recovered. Attempts to secure those who use SCP-1562 have been unsuccessful as the tether is severed at the point of entry. Communication with test subjects who have been lost is possible and on D-2445 managed to crawl across the unforgiving earth of the tunnel until he hit his head on something. He felt it and realized it was a shoe from a child. D2445 would beg to get out of the cave because, quote, it started talking. He heard a child screaming, crying, and begging to see his mother. The child did not acknowledge D2445's presence, speaking only as if he were talking to someone else. Quote, he just kept asking where he was, and I told him I didn't know but I don't think he was really talking to me because he didn't respond to my voice and he told me to stop crying when I was actually sort of calm. D2T445's transmission would end mysteriously after he said something about his chest. It is unclear what he said. Test subject D8600 was given the same equipment as 2445 along with a headlamp and a GPS. He was chosen for his smaller, skinnier stature. When D2445 was found, he was noted to be behaving suspiciously. He did not pay attention to anything that D8600 said, only repeating everything he said in the previous audio logs in verbatim. D8600's broadcast would then mysteriously cut out. There is no clear explanation for D2445's behavior 
Nor is there an explanation to what happened to either test subject. The GPS tracking signal could not be traced. SCP-1562 is kept in testing lab 46V at Site-24. The door to the lab is to be locked at all times. Any and all access is denied unless special clearance is given by Dr. Carver. Because of its thorough containment, SCP-1562 is marked as a safe object. SCP-3000 is an aquatic serpentine entity which resembles a massive moray eel. Though the length of the beast is impossible to determine, it has been hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. Its head measures around 2.5 meters in diameter and sections of its body measure as wide as 10 meters in diameter. SCP-3000 is typically a sedentary creature only moving in response to stimuli or food. Most of its body is in the Ganges fan, and it hardly moves at all. Despite this, it is carnivorous and is able to swiftly attack its prey. Researchers hypothesize that it does not need sustenance for survival. Like any eel, SCP-3000 excretes a thick mucus called Y909. Its digestive process is not well known. SCP-3 sun poses to anyone who views it at an unclear distance. Victims will experience severe heat pain, panic, paranoia, and memory loss or alteration. SCP-3000 was discovered in 1971 after two Bangladeshi fishing boats disappeared near the Indian coast. Concerns of foreign conflict with the newly formed Bangladesh and the aggressor Pakistan. Coastal guards being unable to find the boats only furthered the media hysteria. Foundation researchers at Calcutta, now Kolkata, drew similarities between this incident and another incident two years earlier. They found that the two ships were underwater with an unknown mass. 
This mass was found to be SCP-3000 through subsequent investigative dives. The area would be secured in 1972 and the Aztec Protocol would be enacted in 1998. Investigative dives to the area would reveal the beast's insidious effects. Quote, when we were within 50 meters, the entity turned slowly to look at us. Even now, as I recall watching this thing coil around in the darkness, I can still hear Williams barking like a mad dog in the rear of the vessel, screaming and flailing, shouting about how he could see it in his heed. Perkins and Harrison tried to restrain him, but he got free and smashed his face in against one of the portholes. He hit it so hard he cracked the inner layer of glass. The damage was bad enough that we had to surface. We tried to give Williams medical attention, but he was too far gone at that point. He had pulped himself against the glass, and despite the trauma, he still spoke briefly as he lay dying. Nobody recorded it. We didn't think to at the time. But I remember it well enough. He said, There's nothing, nothing, nothing. By the time we had reached the surface several hours later, Williams was dead. At the time, I didn't think much about what he had said, just the ravings of a man gone mad by the depths, I figured. I didn't know any better." Unquote. Y909 can be used as a chemical weapon to induce amnesia into its victims. There is also increased suggestibility in subjects exposed to the compound, Quote, Individuals administered an amnestic regimen utilizing Y909 show a marked increase in suggestibility, memory clearance and a significant decrease in additional side effects such as nausea, vomiting, bowel distress, blurred vision, headaches, insomnia, heart damage and others. Unquote. The purpose of the Aztec protocol is to take the mucus from SCP-3000 that would otherwise lure people to their death and use it as the basis for amnesthetic application for the Foundation. Containment of SCP-3000 is impossible. It is too large to be contained. Foundation naval ships patrol the area surrounding the SCP and individuals coming into contact with the eel are to be contained immediately. SCP-3000 is a thormial object 